Welcome back to iGym Academy. Following on from last time, we will now cover the basics of CSS, or Cascading Style Spreadsheets, an important language for improving the presentation of your project wiki. In short, CSS alters the manner in which what you code appears on screen in a much more sophisticated manner than was the case with HTML, while at the same time keeping some of the basic structure that we saw with HTML. Over the course of this video, we will go over the basic tags and syntax needed for CSS and examples of where it can be utilized to improve your wiki presentation using an array of examples on screen. As with before, we will be using the program brackets to write and preview our code for a range of examples. Some things to take note of before we start are as follows. CSS describes how a CSS is presented on screen or on other media. This can save a lot of time and can vastly augment the quality of your wiki. All CSS code is placed above the body tags of your code. The syntax for CSS is as follows. The selector is the element you wish to alter and is placed between two style tags above the main body of text, followed by the properties you wish to alter and what you want to alter them with within two brackets as shown on screen. In this example, we will review and subsequently alter a batch of CSS code. Please take note of the overall syntax and relative position of the code fixed between the style tags located just above the body segment of the document. Here in this example, we will alter the color of a given HTML file before saving and previewing it on the left hand side of our screen. The next part of CSS we will cover are style sheets. These are a type of template file consisting of font and layout settings to give a standardized look to certain documents. They can be either external, internal, or inline. With external style sheets, only one link is needed to change an entire document by referring to a single external file. A reference to this external style sheet is put inside the link tag that goes inside the head section. With internal style sheets, a single part of the document is changed by altering an individual segment piece by piece. For example, we could reference a given paragraph specifically. Please take note of the overall syntax. External style sheets only have to be applied once, whereas the internal style sheets, similar to the examples that were shown on screen, will alter elements piece by piece. Inline style sheets may be used to apply a unique style for a single element, as shown here on screen. To use inline style sheets as a style attribute to the relevant element, do as shown in the example on screen. One of the most useful attributes of CSS is the ability to change fonts, whether it be in terms of the font size or font family. The two primary tags for doing this are font family and font size. Examples of each are on screen. Apart from font family or font size, there are various other tags on offer that you can alter the font of a document with. Some of these are as follows, and all are applied in a similar manner to the two previous tags. In this example, we will be playing around with fonts using CSS by converting the text of one of the paragraphs to italic. Please take note of the overall syntax of the code, as well as the relative position between the script tags and the above body as before. Another useful property of CSS is the ability to direct what kind of background image you want displayed on your wiki page. This is done using the following background tags. Background-color codes for whatever color you want to appear in the background, while as the name suggests, background-image codes for the type of image you wish to appear on screen. Another useful tag here is the background repeat, which codes for whether or not you wish the image to repeat in the background. With this in mind, we move on to our example. First, we move our image to the top left by altering its position before setting it to repeat as shown. Here, we will make use of the background position and repeat. Another useful property that can be altered using CSS is CSS borders, whose style and color can be altered. A list of given borders are as follows. Dotted codes for a dotted border around a given segment of the document.
Here in this example, we will alter the borders of a given document as shown. As always, take note of the syntax and make sure to save and preview your code on the left hand side of the screen. Another useful property of CSS is the ability to alter links by making them much more sophisticated than the simple blue coloured URL addresses that we code for with HTML. Links can be styled with any CSS property such as colour, font, background and so on. A handful of useful tags are as follows with regards to coding links with CSS. Thank you for watching. Hopefully by the end of this video, you have grasped some of the basics of CSS and how it can be used to improve the overall presentation of your wiki. In the next video, we will cover the basics of JavaScript, which is normally employed to make your wiki more interactive by allowing numerous programs to be run.